When I first started working as a professional photographer and later as a documentary filmmaker, I used to think that if only I could get that next big client or big payday, I would finally have made it and everything would be smooth sailing. Making a full-time living with a camera was and still is my dream life and I am really lucky to be able to have done exactly that for the last 11 years or so. But along the way I've learned a few uncomfortable truths about a career in filmmaking, things that I had to learn the hard way and that you'll probably have to deal with too if you're committed to this path. The good news is that after spending most of my adult life doing pretty much nothing other than taking photos and shooting video, I've already dealt with these truths and figured out a way to move past them. Because even though it's not perfect, life as a documentary filmmaker is a ticket to experiences and adventures that I would have never been able to have otherwise. So if there's gonna be a price to be paid, it's still worth it in my opinion. I'm gonna try and rank these in order of how hard I found them to deal with, starting with the slightly uncomfortable and working my way up to the big ones that I'm still dealing with myself even today. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years of working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. If you're into that kind of thing, make sure to get uncomfortable with that subscribe button because I've got more like it coming every week. For the first, I wanna say two years of my documentary career, I didn't earn a cent. I basically spent my life savings traveling around Asia, shooting full time as I tried to get good. It was really exciting and fun to be out there actually going after my goal, but at the same time, I was so full of anxiety about when I would finally make it that I was constantly wondering if maybe I just wasn't good enough or that maybe I should just quit. And every time my photography mentor would patiently write back and remind me that on average, it takes most people three to five years to get really good and then I needed to be patient. And that's the first uncomfortable truth I learned about this job. Relax, because no matter what you're gonna do, it will not happen fast. I'm putting this at the start of this list because it's pretty much true for most things that are worth doing in life. Whether you call it mastery or the 10,000 hour rule or whatever, we all know that it takes time to get good at things. The problem is that because of the internet and the power of self-teaching, plus the affordability of really high-end camera gear for low prices these days, and the huge quantity of high-end content coming out from our favorite creators, it's easy to get the impression that filmmaking is something that happens fast if you just follow these five steps or buy the right lens. But of course, that's not the way it works. And like anything, you just need to put in the time before something will stick. The sooner you can accept that, the happier you'll be. If you stick with it for long enough, something will happen, I promise. But the hard part is that no one can tell you exactly when. And that's a great segue into the next truth on this list. You will need to get lucky. Luck manifests itself in a lot of different ways, but most professional filmmakers that I know of have some sort of lucky break story in their past. You know that moment where everything just aligned at the right time and they jumped on the chance. My first professional job on a TV crew happened because a National Geographic camera operator broke his leg on the first day of a shoot and I was brought in as an emergency replacement. And once I got that, I never looked back. Now your lucky break won't be the same as mine or anyone else's for that matter. But at some point, if you've been working hard enough for long enough, some random thing will pop up out of nowhere and springboard you to the next level of your career. No one can tell you when it will happen, which means that things can feel hopeless right up until the minute where everything changes. And that's the most frustrating part. One more thing on luck though. In my experience, luck only really lands for people who are in a position to take advantage of it, like the people who are already hustling their brains out so that when an opportunity comes, they're ready for it. They've been practicing, they've been networking, uh, they've got their own projects in development or whatever, but if you haven't put the groundwork in on your own time, those lucky breaks will just slip through your fingers. On the surface level, I got that Nat Geo job because the guy took a fall, but the reality was that it was a result of tons of decisions and effort over time. First, I spent seven years working working as a photographer to understand cameras, composition, and learn the social skills needed to work in unfamiliar places. Then I took the risk of moving to Mexico City on a one-way ticket without ever having visited in my life and investing nearly eight months aggressively learning Spanish. I also gambled big on my first cinema camera when all my income to that point had been made with a stills camera and put my time into the relationships in Mexico City so that when the accident happened, the local producer suggested my name. It was actually eight years of experience that went into that one lucky moment. So if you want luck to come your way too, you need to think about creating it rather than receiving it. I'm keeping luck towards the bottom of this list just because like the fact that it's gonna take a long time, this is something you'll quickly realize you have no control over. And so it's just easier to stop worrying about it and get back to work. The next thing I'll touch on here is a little trickier though because it's more about your own motivations than external factors. If I'm being totally like embarrassingly honest, one of the things that motivated me early on in my career was the thought that I was doing really cool things that most people don't get to do. 
I was a longtime backpacker before getting into cameras, and I think I always dreamed of being that person at the table with the most interesting stories. So when I got into photojournalism and documentary, and suddenly I legitimately had all these crazy stories to tell, the vain egotistical part of me figured out that other people would be impressed. And they kind of were, sort of, but I pretty soon realized that most people are just too busy thinking about their own lives to care much about what you're doing. So if what you really want is to impress a few strangers on a plane with your story about the illegal wildlife trade, they're gonna forget about it in a few minutes and go back to living their lives. I guess my point here is that if you're getting into filmmaking because you want others to think you're cool, you should probably think a little more. To do this job for the long term, you need to really want to do it for yourself without caring what other people think. External motivation can be powerful in getting us started in things, but to have real staying power in this industry, you need to be pushing yourself from within. So forget about other people and only do this because you feel like you couldn't imagine doing anything else because you're obsessed. Get into it for the wrong reasons and you're gonna be very disappointed in the long term. Speaking of long term, the fourth thing on this list lasts, as far as I know, forever. At least I'm still dealing with it and it's been more than a decade. I'm talking about being nervous. When I got my first real paying job with a camera, I was so nervous I barely slept. I stumbled my way through the shoot, terrified and sweating, and then when it was over, I can't say I'd really enjoyed it much. I guess I just figured that those nerves would go away one day after I'd made it and that eventually I'd just be totally confident all the time. The problem is that never happened. The actor Henry Fonda, who's one of the great legends of Hollywood, was apparently throwing up before every single stage performance well into the 70s at the end of his career. The fear never goes away no matter how good we are because as we get better our responsibilities increase and because if you're any good at what you do you probably genuinely care about it succeeding. If you don't get nervous at all it would probably be a sign that you're either not challenging yourself enough or that maybe you're not that interested in your project. At least that's been my experience and I still get anxious as I pack for jobs that I know are well within my wheelhouse. If there are any super zen filmmakers out there who aren't like this, let me know your secrets in the comments. The takeaway here is that instead of succumbing to the fear and running away from things that make us nervous, we just need to accept that the nerves are a sign that we're doing the right thing and go for it anyways. Which actually demonstrates my next point exactly, because when we say go for it, what exactly does it mean? One of the problems with a creative career like filmmaking is that there's no real end point, there's no finish line to cross, and no matter how many successes you have, you're never gonna win the game. But when you're just starting out, at least for me, I always figured that I'd feel like one day I'd made it. But that just never happened. When I was a photojournalist, I thought that my life would make sense if I could just get an assignment for the New York Times. But you know what? I got that assignment and a bunch more. And even after my 10th gig with them, I didn't feel secure. The same thing happened in video. I thought if I could only work my way up to being the DP of a major show, I could breathe a sigh of relief and sit back and rest on my accomplishments. But of course that came and went and I still feel like I have so much work to do. The point is that you're never gonna feel like you've made it even once you've made it in everyone else's eyes. On the first day of every new shoot, you'll always feel like an imposter who somehow snuck in the back door, even if you're in charge of the whole crew. So if you're hoping that buying a camera or booking that new client is finally gonna give you that pro status you've been craving, I'm sorry to tell you that's probably not how things are gonna go. Instead, try to think of filmmaking as one endless non-linear path that has no endpoint and no fixed milepost to measure yourself by. You just keep getting better and better and trying new things, but you'll never really arrive at a final destination. Accepting that early on can help take the pressure off in a big way. All right, so we're almost at the end here and I saved the worst for last. At least it's been the hardest and most uncomfortable truth for me to accept, and that's that it's never gonna be smooth sailing. I'll explain exactly what I mean by that in a second, but one of the best things about this job, at least in my opinion, has always been how much freedom and control over your own time that comes with it. I've never really been the kind of person who wanted a full-time job with a fixed schedule and vacation days planned out months in advance. I much prefer a cycle of working really hard on projects for a limited time than wrapping them, getting a large block of free time so that I can think and read and plan the next thing. Let me know in the comments if that's just me or if you guys like that lifestyle too. The good thing is that I got exactly what I wanted. I haven't really ever had a real job in my life and the last time I had an employment contract longer than a few months was in 2010. I love the freedom I have in my life and it's really the only reason why I'm able to spend time on things like this YouTube channel and personal projects. But at the same time, the trade-off is secure Security. When you have a real job, you get a real paycheck every two weeks and you can use that knowledge to plan ahead. Filmmaking, even at the highest levels, is always going to be up and down. 
Some months you'll work a ton, sometimes there'll be a pandemic and you won't work for six months. Unless you get into series television or take a job at a production company, you're gonna have to deal with the ebbs and flows of the freelance life just like the rest of us. When this gets bad, it can be really tough to deal with. Usually about once a year or so, I'll go through a dry spell and think about applying for a job as a video creator on staff for a big company or something, but it usually passes after a couple of weeks. And if I'm being honest with myself, even though it can be a real roller coaster sometimes, I don't think I'd actually be able to give up all this freedom this life has given me. So that's it, six uncomfortable truths I've learned over the course of my career. Filmmaking and documentary filmmaking specifically has been one of the most satisfying and interesting ways to live I could possibly imagine. And I think about how lucky I am almost every day. So I hope I haven't scared you away with this video because if you're wired right for it, I think it's one of the best jobs in the world. But it's not all first class tickets and crazy adventures and the better we get at accepting these things, the better off we'll be in the long run. Hope that video was helpful when thinking about your own filmmaking careers. Let me know in the comments if you've felt like this before in your own life or if these things are true for yourself so I know I'm not alone here. And if you did like that one, you might also like this other video I made about why I think documentary filmmaking might be the best job in the world for some people. See ya.